that's Captain Chad Jeffrey, who's the responsible for Station 3. Uh, this um, a lot of the also Kermit. A lot of the times people ask, you know, if, if somebody calls for a medic call, how can they get a fire truck as well? Um, the reason for that is we're all certified to at least EMT, um, and a good chunk of us are certified paramedic. Uh, as far as emergency medicine goes, um, those are really two two of the definitive points that you can get to. EMT is your real basic life support, um, you know, wound dressing, just basic care, and then paramedic is a big step up from that where we can do drug interventions. Um, there's a lot more invasive procedures that we can do as paramedics to, to help better the outcome. Um, EMT school is about four months um, and a little bit of ride time. So you're gonna go and you're gonna learn some basic anatomy and physiology, you're gonna learn some basic care, you know, things that you can do to help somebody's outcome, and then you're gonna go and do some field time. So you're gonna spend some time on a medic unit with a full crew. You're gonna spend some time in the nursing home. You're gonna spend some time in the hospital and be able to really kind of get an understanding for um, what can be wrong with people or what makes people sick or hurt or not feel good, and then how to fix it. Um, fast forward from that, after you get an EMT license, you can then opt to become a paramedic. Paramedic school is about a year, and um, Chase is actually in the process right now, so I'm gonna let him tell you a little bit about how paramedic school works. All right, so like I said, paramedic school is about a year long. Uh, currently going to Creighton. Uh, what we do is we go Monday for eight hours a day, uh, then we go Tuesday and Thursday for four hours a day. Uh, Monday and Tuesdays, what we do is, is our basic lecture. Uh, it's our book stuff, it's our PowerPoints, it's learning about what we're gonna be doing in the field and stuff like that. On Thursdays is what we call our lab days. It's where we actually get to do hands-on stuff. We actually get to interact with uh, dummies that have blood pressures. We interact with our other students that are having certain medical issues done with and wrong with them. So in that process, it's, it's a good hands-on experience. Uh, with that being said, uh, we go for the full entire year we go to school. We also do in our clinical time, which is our hospital time. And we do a lot of hours in our hospital times. Uh, some of the hours we do, uh, we do 88 hours of ER time, so any of the emergency rooms that we have to go to. Uh, we do ICU time uh, and critical care units. So these are the people that are really, really sick. Um, they got tubes down their throat, they got multiple medications. There's something really wrong with them that they have to stay at the hospital for long periods of time after the fact they go from the ER to the ICUs. Um, we have to do respiratory shifts. So people who are intubated or have tubes down their throat, basically, basic common sense right there. We learn why and how to take care for those. And we learn about ventilators and stuff like that. We have to do cath lab time. So people have, who have had heart attacks or have issues with their, their heart pumping, we can actually go in and we do that for like six hours where we watch the cardiologists do the surgeries. Um, we have to do time in the OD and uh, labor and delivery force, uh, childbirth. We do like 36 hours there or 32 hours there. Uh, ICU time was 36, and then uh, what else do we do? That's, and then we go to children's hospital, right? For our, for our kids, our children's ER time. We do we do 32 hours of children's time. Um, with that, we also have to do our our field time, so our ride-alongs uh, with Papillion, uh, with Omaha Fire, with Council Bluffs Fire, with Lincoln Fire. Uh, we also have contracts outside of the state, so we can go to different places like Oklahoma City and Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I, with uh, programs down there. So it's a it's a very strenuous process. Uh, you go to school and you're a full time student, but if you consider the hospital and the field time, you also have basically a full time job there. So it takes up a majority and a good chunk of the year that you're going through paramedic school. Like Jess, and like Brett said, it, it's, it gets you to that next level of care where you're doing a lot more and you're learning about the drug, you're learning about the equipment, you're learning the pathophys of why stuff's happening, you're learning about drug interactions and really going in depth about uh, medical issues and trauma issues and, and stuff like that. So. Um, so like he said, when you go to paramedic school, it's not something that you can just you know go to and kind of basically learn to pass the test and, and go out into the field. Um, on any given day, at any given time, you can be standing here right now with you guys. Um, if our radio is sound and we get a call, then we go on that call. No matter what that call is, 
Um, we don't know what that next call is going to be. You know, it could be anything you guys can think of from a stub toe to somebody not breathing, hearts not beating, and then we have to go in and try and fix it. So, um, normal day in our life, um, we work. Uh, we're, we're career firefighters at the time, so we are there. Um, there's somebody there 24 hours a day, all the time. We work on a three shift rotation those shifts are 24 hours at a time. So we work in a chunk of 10 days, we work every other day. We work five of those. Um, the other shifts do the same thing, just rotated a little bit. Um, what that means is we got to work at seven o'clock this morning, we don't leave work until seven o'clock tomorrow morning. And then we get 24 hours off, we come back. Seven o'clock the next morning, we're there for a full 24 hours. Um, so we live at the station. We buy our own food, we eat at the station. We exercise at the station. We do at least two hours of training every day, whether it be medical training, whether it be firefighting training, because we do both. We rotate between the truck and the medicaid. Uh, if there's a fire call, we all go. If there's a medical call, the truck goes as well. Um, extra set of hands, a little bit more to help us out. And throughout that day schedule, you know, we get there in the morning, we do our chores, we do our training, uh, we come here and visit you guys, maybe we even get lunch workout in the afternoon, probably some more training, and then dinner, and from then on we kind of use that time to relax. You know, we're there for a 24-hour period, get all the hard work done during the day, and then the rest of it is for running calls. Um, we do sleep at work. People ask that question all the time. We go to bed at probably 9 o'clock and wake up in the morning and do our morning chores. Um, that being said, if those phones go off, we have usually less than a minute to get down to the truck and get out the door. So we do sleep, but most of the time that sleep is interrupted, um, sometimes not at all, just depends on the night. Um, and that's probably one of the best things about this job. You know, we come to work knowing what our daily schedule might be, uh, but it gets interrupted several times with those calls where we really have to go run out and, and go to work and get stuff done. Um, any questions at all so far? So yeah. on average, how many calls per day do you guys get and you have to go to? Um, five. Say yeah, about five. Yeah, some days more, some days less. Um, but average kind of hovers around five. Um, but uh, the, the department last year ran just about 3,500 calls. And a majority of those calls come out of this downtown station. Uh, if you guys all know the downtown fire station back behind Rome Hood SDK, that's where the, a large majority of those calls come out of. It really, it really matters on what the population is around your fire station. Like some, bigger, uh, some of the departments in bigger cities like Omaha, you know, they're gonna run, or bigger cities even that, like New York or Chicago are gonna run 15 to 20 or 25 plus calls a day for a really, really, really busy station. Uh, what we brought with us today is just kind of a, a complement of our medical equipment. Um, it is an ER or hospital room all this equipment is going to be you know, stored up on their shelves or in their carts. Uh, we carry it in these boxes, uh, and that's so that we can bring them actually inside somebody's house or inside their apartment, uh, wherever they happen to be, and, and try and fix whatever problem they're having. Um, we carry quite a lot of stuff, um, whether it be our airway management box. That box is basically all for airway problems, breathing problems. where we're actually securing their airway with a tube. Um, uh, even something as simple as checking our vitals comes out of that box. And then this box is our, we call this our drug box. This has got all of our invasive drugs, um, things that we will use to speed up the heart, slow down the heart. If somebody's having difficulty breathing, we can fix that with medication most of the time. Um, and what it really comes down to is, is you know, problem solving. We have to figure out what's going on, what's causing the problem, and how can we fix it? Um, and we're trying to fix it as soon as we can. You know, if we can fix it sitting on somebody's couch in their living room, that's fantastic. We can get it fixed, get them stable, and then take them to the hospital where they can get further care. Um, most of the time that's possible. There are some times where package them up and we run lights and sirens as fast as we can to the hospital. So, um, some of the stuff we carry, a lot of these drugs, they have to have a route to get into the body. Uh, anybody ever had an ID before? Yeah, we do a lot of IDs. Um, one of the best ways to get 
fluid back into the body for people who are dehydrated or feeling sick is to go through an IV. It goes straight into the bloodstream. It's very fast. For our medications, they work in seconds. Um, and some of these medications, they have to go in through an IV. There's no other route for them. Um, so we do use that as a primary drug route. Um, one thing that we can do that we always like to show just for shock value is uh, we have what's called an IO. It's an interosseous gun. Um, if somebody is really sick, and I mean, not able to talk to you, not able to respond, and they need one of our medications right now, we carry this kit that we can use that is, for lack of better terms, a drill. <laughs> and we can actually put drugs, medication, and fluid directly into the bone marrow. Um, by using this drill, which sounds just like a drill, uh, I'll send around the drill. Don't squeeze the trigger. Uh, it's a not changeable battery, so we only get so many squeezes on it. Um, I'll hand around one of the needles just to show you guys. These go in, pass them off. These go in underneath the knee, basically. Um, we find a special spot where they can go in. Um, goes in kind of below and off to the side. Again, not something we would do to a conscious person. From what they say, the drilling part doesn't hurt that bad. There's no nerve tissue inside your bone, so pushing through the skin might hurt a little bit. Um, but when you push fluid in, that's where they say there's a little bit of pain involved. Most of the time, that's not going to be for somebody who's awake and conscious. That's going to be for somebody who's unconscious, needs emergency medication right now, which we do run into from time to time. Um, and if you guys want to watch videos, go to YouTube and just type in IO gun and watch all kinds of people give me. If you guys are interested in that stuff, don't do it in school. <laughs> are any of you guys taking this class because you're interested in going on in the career in the health field, becoming a nurse or a doctor? Okay. Uh, what we'll, we'll tell you guys is what we told the other class. A lot of people that take the paramedic course or the EMT course will, will, will do that because they want to go on and become an RN. Good introduction into the health field. You'll see, like Chase talked about, a broad spectrum of uh, you know people who are sick and people who are hurt. You'll see, you know, all the way from pediatrics to, to geriatrics. And uh, so it's it's uh, it kind of forces you to interact with patients. It gives you an idea of what it would be like to make a career out of it. Uh, when you're doing your ride time, even uh, during med school, you know, at some point later on in med school, you'll be responsible for that patient. The medics that are precepting you, uh, they'll stand back and, and let you do the assessments. So it'll force you to interact with those people. You'll have to talk to sick people. You'll have to come up with your own treatment plan. And you'll have to uh, you know, tell other people what you want done to help that patient. So if you are interested in you know, going on making a career in, in the health, health field, it's a good place to start. Um, it's, you know, becoming an EMT is a fairly quick process. Uh, and then you might decide that it's not for you. You might decide that you really like it and go on to paramedic school uh, and then continue on with your career. So. I, I want to mention something about uh, the health career itself. There's two, there's two polar opposites. One is firefighter paramedics and then nursing. Um, and what I mean by that is becoming a firefighter paramedic is maybe the hardest job to get in America because there's so many applicants and basically all you have to be is of legal age and have a high school diploma. So you may, they may be hiring 50 people and there may be 6,000 people that apply for those 50 jobs. Just statistically, it's a really hard job to get because it's a really good job that pays well. Um, and on the opposite side of that is nursing. There's a national nursing shortage and in, in the metro area, it's even, it's even bigger. And it, the pay is pretty comparable. Um, it, you know, nursing, you can make upwards of 70 to $90,000 a year, depending on what your field is. They're so short that a hospital will hire you to work there, pay for your schooling, and all you have to do is say that I'll work there for four years after I graduate. You have a guaranteed job. That's how short they are in nursing. It's a great job, uh, but just to give you a scope since you're talking about careers of how different the two fields are, um, you can write your own ticket if, you, if you're interested in nursing at all. I think it's a great opportunity. And firefighter paramedics is a great job too, but um, be prepared for some frustration and test taking. <laughs>